Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Carry for the Everyday Guys. So I'm sorry I'm so far out, but I wanted to give you guys a full view of the backpack I have on my back. This is my bug out bag in its full entire setup. And I'm going to be talking today about some of the concepts that are vital, or at least in my opinion, are vital to bug out bags, whether it be gear item or a mental sort of mindset as to what you are going to do when you do bug out if you ever do bug out hopefully you never have to i'm going to try to put like three or five vital gear items or gear concepts or mental concepts in this video it will be between three and five but not less than three i'm going to talk about my my bag initially so if you want to skip straight to the gear items i'll put the time down below and you can skip straight to that but the bag is a sniper africa or sniper tactical expedition backpack and sort of here comes the first concept guys if you're going to build a bug out bag for whatever reason get yourself a high quality backpack okay this bag is probably not something you're going to be using that often hopefully but when you do use it you're going to want a backpack that is as you can see um, able to carry quite a lot of gear and able to do it comfortably this is not the kind of backpack that you want to be uh, malfunctioning at the moment when you need it because more than likely you're going to need it in a emergency situation so that is the first sort of concept um, vital concept I want to put out there if you're going to build a bug out bag try to get yourself a high quality bug out bag the second um, concept is have a bug out plan no matter what you put in this backpack no matter how you deck it out if you don't know what you're going to do in the situation where you need to bug out you're kind of wasting your time. You're just going to end up wandering around with a very heavy bag on your back. Bug out bags and bug out plans go together. You should, in my opinion, you shouldn't have one if you don't have the other. So that's very important to have a bug out plan. My plan is quite simply to bug out to a location and I'm going to do that via a vehicle. Now, if I can't get a vehicle, if for whatever reason my vehicle malfunctions, then I'm going to have to adapt my plan and my bug out bag needs to cater for that adaptation. Understand that you have to have a plan, you have to have a sort of a way to get to a different location. If you're bugging out inherently, you are moving from where you are to a different location because of natural disaster, because of danger, you know, look at what happened in Zimbabwe quite recently. You know, you never know when you're going to need this kind of thing. So good backpack. And a bug out plan is vital to the way you stack up and rack up your, 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 your bug out bag. Otherwise, you're just going to end up cramming unnecessary gear in there. And when you need it, you're going to A, not have what you need and B, have a whole lot of things that you don't need. Let's get into the, the, the backpack. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take you through the outside of the pack first. Because those are things that I will sometimes remove. And then I'll take it to the inside of the bag. And those are things that kind of sort of live in the bag. I never switch them out. They stay in there pretty much forever. Let's have a look. Okay, guys. So here we have the pack in its entirety. Now, I do want to apologize if you have any inclination to see my face in this video. You're not going to see a lot of it. The main focus on this video is going to be about this backpack. So I'm sorry for that. But if you do want to see my face, that's kind of weird. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go through the outside and like I said, the outside are things that may come off the pack if I use it. For example, I've got a Ronnie on here that you can see there. This I still use, but when I don't use it, it goes onto the pack. So obviously, as you'll notice, I've got my firearm inside of a holster. This is a Shinobi Kydex holster and it caters for the Nextorch WL10X. Now you are going to notice a theme when it comes to all the lights on this backpack. So I will remind you of that. And, and so what this effectively is, this is a spare holster that's on the backpack. And you'll understand that as we go through the video as well. Okay. So this holster caters for the Nextorch WL10X. I hardly ever use this light anymore and I hardly ever use this holster anymore. So good to have something like this on the backpack where you are good to go. Now it doesn't stay here. So if I, if I have to use this backpack, this holster won't stay here and I won't leave my fire on in the holster and as always guys this firearm is empty and safe so don't be too concerned about that now coming around to the other side as you can see we've got a micro ronnie and this is basically just clipped onto here okay and this is going to be sort of the intro to another 
section of, of the bag and bug out concept I want to talk about, and that is protection. So if you're going to bug out, chances are you are going to need to protect yourself and probably protect the loved one. I don't ever like to recommend anything, but I'm of the opinion that you do want to have some sort of force multiplier on your backpack. If you don't own a firearm, that's fine. You know, get a, a, a knife, a machete, whatever the case may be. Remember, in a room full of empty guns, the man with one bullet is king. So you might not need the world's most powerful tool. You just have to be more powerful and more capable than the person who is trying to assault you. So this is a micro run here. It's fully kitted. I'm not going to talk too much about it because I have done the review. But what you'll notice is that the next torch has now moved over to the Ronnie. So this isn't the torch I use on the Ronnie. On the Ronnie, I will use the Olight PL2 Balder. Okay, I did a full review of that and this entire Ronnie and the way I've got it set up is this laser on the boulder is sort of set up for 10, 10, 12, 15 meters and then the red dot which is from Bushnell is sort of set up for 10 meters and beyond. So they kind of line up pretty well. If the one fails, I can put the other one on and I'll get more or less the same um, sight picture with where that red dot is. I can see the red dot of the boulder and the red dot of the, the, the red dot scope um, pretty much next to each other. So I can use one or the other if any of them fail. Obviously, I've got iron sights on here as well, just in case this thing, the, the scope fails entirely. Then we've got a thumb rest on the other side. This makes for way more comfortable shooting. And a sling, if you're going to be carrying this guy around for a while, a sling is very, very important. And then on here, we've got some mechanics glove. These are the fingerless kind. Um, I just like them. They just work. These are the impact um, brand and yeah, really useful pair of gloves. I like fingerless gloves over gloves that are not fingerless because it just gives me more control and having a set of gloves on your bug out bag is quite useful because you never know what the temperature is going to be like outside when you do bug out. Further to protection, I don't know how much of these cans of, of pepper spray I have. I, I, could, I could have well over 10. I literally almost buy one every time I go buy something at the gun shop with its ammo, whatever the case may be. Just because I want one everywhere because this is, this is, this is what I consider free food. And it's, it's a term my girlfriend and I have, have sort of coined. This is, you can use this on pretty much anyone. Apologize later. It's an excellent tool for, for getting out of situations. It's not as permanent as a bullet or a blade. And when I say free food, I mean it's ju it's just too good to not have. Okay, pepper spray. This is really if you don't get anything else, get yourself some pepper spray, and it'll it'll really help you out. On the side here, I have got a hatchet. So this is not so much for cutting down trees as it is probably going to be for breaking into places. I have to be honest. My bug out plan does not uh, sort of cater for me to be out in the wild for any length of time so what I'm going to need to do is get to a vehicle and if necessary I might need to get to some supplies so this gives me the option for doing that and again if I then need to sort of uh, get some wood to make a fire if everything goes south I've got that option but this is more of a of a gaining entry to places where I might not want or be allowed to gain entry to and again that's going to be determined by the type of situation that you are bugging out in remember guys there is the concept that that what is necessary is legal. So what is necessary for you to survive, you are very rarely going to get convicted of a crime as a result of that. Uh, don't go overboard in that though, it's basically only what is necessary. Okay, further on. So we've got a watch with a paracord bracelet that says a whistle as well and a small compass. That is useful, I'll explain it to you in a moment. And then a K-Bot TDI, so in a bug out situation, this is going to come off my backpack and go onto my body. Same thing with a watch if needed. A watch is important simply because if you are going to need to move on foot and you know where you're going, if it's 50 kilometers away, you know, you should know how far you travel in an hour and that way you can plan. So if you travel, if you're, if you're walking and you travel, for example, five kilometers in an hour, you will know how far you travel per day and you'll be able, you'll be able to ration accordingly. You know, so having a watch is very important so you can track your distance covered and how far you expect it to be from your target location. But then again, remember, you need to know how far you can travel in one hour walking. So also things like knowing when to eat. You're going to want to ration your food if you've got food in here and you're bugging out for, for more than one day. So eating once every six hours, once every eight hours, whatever the case may be. Coming around to this side, we've got some quite aggressive load-bearing carabiners. Again, 
this is free food, no reason to not have this, you can do so many things with carabiners. And then attached to the carabiner is some insulation tape. You'll probably end up using this more in life than you will pretty much anything else in this bag. Insulation tape, very useful. As you can see pretty much on this bag, there are not that many showy things, okay? Um, yes, this is green, but that just is what it is. But the bag overall is, I'm, I try to keep it as, as non eye-catching as possible. The med kit has no patches on it or anything. I'm not going to go through my med kit because, as you know, I refrain from doing that because I'm not a medical professional. I don't want to influence you. I will show you a little later on some of the things I do carry in there that just work for me, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. But this should be a quite comprehensive med kit. You're going to want things in here for, for hectic situations. So, stack this med kit out um, as aggressively and as intensely as you can then here's that holster which i showed you earlier on coming around to the back we've got a flashlight this is the olight m1t raider and again i will explain why i use these why i'm using this light as well as the next torch as well as the olight pl2 boulder in just a second but there's a very particular reason i went for this Olight. I've got many Olights, but it's a very good reason I want, went for this Olight. So this is the light that will come onto my body in a bug out situation. I've got another flashlight on here that will sort of stay on the bag, but that's for a different purpose. This will be for just general use in a bug out situation. Tactical pen. This is from CHS Guns. Really cool. Very useful. You can really cause a lot of damage with this and it's very, very uh, nondescript. You know, carrying a pen around is not a big deal. So worth carrying. Also works as a glass breaker with a tungsten carbide tip. So coming along to the right hand side strap, we've got a buff. This is a buff from Olight. A buff is another one of those free food style things. There are so many uses you have for a buff. This one's been range rolled and tucked in one of the loops. Buffs can keep you warm, they can keep you cool, they can help with keeping dust or debris out of your face while you sleep, if you sleep, oh sorry, out of your mouth while you're sleeping at night, if you are sleeping, mouth, nose, whatever the case may be. It works as a scarf, it can work as a makeshift bandage. Really guys, there's no reason to not have a buff in your bug out bag. And then here we have a buck hunting knife. So this knife not, is not only a knife, obviously it comes with this little tool that has a blade inside here. This, I'm told, will rip through a car seatbelt. I didn't test it on my own seatbelt simply because I value my car and it's part of my bug out plan. And then the blade itself is a decent sized blade. Again, this is going to be used for utilitarian purposes, not for defensive purposes, simply because of where it's located and how difficult it is to get out in a, in a high stress situation. If I can get it, I will get it, but otherwise I'll go to the K bar that I had on the back of the knife, which will be on my body. But buck make really good blades, really good hunting survival blades, that sort of thing. Very comfortable in the hand, very utilitarian. And then at the bottom here, we have the Immolent DN35. So this is quite a monster flash. I'm not going to do too much talking about it. But you're looking at well over 2000 lumens and it can hold that for quite a long time, quite a few hours. The reason I have this on here is this would act as a searchlight in, in, in the situations where searchlight is needed. Not as my utilitarian light um, when, I am, when I do need a light just sort of for general purposes. Then I'll use the M1T radar that you saw earlier on. This also has SOS and beacon mode. Like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm not going to show too much about it because I'm going to do a full review about this light in the coming weeks. But SOS and beacon mode is pretty much an internationally recognized, recognized sort of save me mode. And, you know, if they are aircraft flying over, whatever the case may be, strap this in 2000 or 2200 odd lumens in beacon mode, pretty much it's going to be seen from the air. So that's why I've got this sort of tucked into the side strap of the right hand side. On the left hand side strap, I've got a water bottle. As you can see, this guy is solid. It can go on a fire. It has been on a fire. It's been through the mill. This is kind of like an old friend that I just can't let go of. This would more than likely go inside my backpack if I were ever to need to use it. Simply because if you think about it, if you're bugging out, water might become a very valuable commodity. And you don't want people seeing that you have a water bottle on your backpack. So this will probably go into the bag and then I'll just get it when I do need to take a drink. Okay, so then as we get into the first sort of main body section of the bag, firstly, you're going to want good zips so that you can do that with your backpack. And this section I kind of call my life section. Okay, it's the, first, it's the main compartment. Now, you're going to see a lot of clothes here. 
I've pretty much got a full outfit inside this backpack. And my reasoning behind that is quite simply, I don't know when I'm going to need to bug out. If I need to bug out at 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm in my underwear because I was sleeping, I might not have time to fiddle around, get clothes, it's going to be dark, who knows if it's going to be electricity. I might need to get out of there in a hurry and then I'm sort of outside with this cool bag but I'm naked. So what we've got here is pretty much a, a outfit for all environments. We've got a hoodie that has been rolled up into its own hood. Then here we've got like a little life pack. Um, and this is literally just for creature comforts. I know people are going to say you don't need this. So we've got wet wipes. We've got floss. We've got these two travel toothbrushes with a small tube of toothpaste inside them. And also more like wet wipe palettes. You get these little palettes wet and they like expand and you get like 30 wet wipes on a palette. Now, people are going to say you don't need that. And I agree you don't need that. But anyone's ever been camping, I've been camping many times. I do. I love camping will know that simple amenities like being able to brush your teeth, floss, clean yourself, can make the, the, the world of mental difference if you're having a tough time. So having things like this is just simply there to boost your morale. And then over here, I don't know if you can see it. So South African laws dictate that you need to keep ammo in your safe. So I'm not saying this is ammo in here, but this little pouch just happens to be the perfect size to hold 250 round ammo boxes. So I'm not saying what is in there, but you can, you can infer for yourself what you think is in here. And then a snood, a snood is basically a scarf stitched together on both ends. A beanie, similar concept as the snood. And then in here, we've got a Ranger Old t-shirt. This, this is the exact same as the current t-shirt I'm wearing. It's been Ranger Old. Guys, if you don't know how to Ranger Old, YouTube it, it will save you space like nobody's business. Thermal top and bottom, also been ranger old. And a high-tech hiking pants. So the cool thing about this pants, and I'm not going to unranger old it because I like it the way it is. It's one of those zip-off pants that zips sort of halfway down the leg. So it's a shorts and a long pants. That's very useful because you don't know what kind of environment you're going to be in. And then in the back of the pack, there's this little section at the back here. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but a pair of Crocs with a pair of socks stuck inside. Now, you might ask, why on earth do I have this? Well, quite simply, I don't wear this anymore, but they are intensely comfortable. They've got no laces, so I don't need to worry about my one lace breaking and then my bug out shoes are ruined. And as you can see, I've got a full outfit in this bag. I can literally be completely naked, bug out and completely clothe myself. Really simple, easy for walking, rubber, leather, waterproof, everything you need, no laces, comfortable, so no reason to not have in your bug out bag if you can fit it in your bug out bag. Okay, so that's this compartment empty, and as you can see, it can hold quite a bit. Coming down to this area over here, so I had a malfunction last week with a, a food item that was in here, and that really sucked. So I had to go out and buy more food items, and I really changed my, my mentality. So initially, I had those waterless ration packs and one of those sort of got uh, punctured and it was a freaking mess inside here. So I decided I'm going to go for things I like because why not? Okay, so the things inside here is also pretty much things you'd find inside my hiking pack. Um, for those in America, this is called in South Africa Druvos, it's Afrikaans word. I suppose the English direct translation would be dry sausage. I love this stuff. I will probably eat this whole bag immediately in a bag of situation, but I'll have to ration it. So I've got three of these. This is like protein and you know, it's meat effectively. So, and then I've got a stack of these muesli. This is actually cereal, but can be eaten as effectively um, a meal. And I will sort of try to ration this to where it's one, one sachet is one meal. So that's how many meals I effectively have. Energy bars, because why not? You're probably going to need it. Raw almonds. Try not to go with anything salted in this bag, guys, because salt is going to dehydrate. You're going to go through your water quite quickly. And then just some mixed fruit. And then also right in the bottom is a Twix. I know what you're thinking. Why would you need a Twix? Twix is my favorite chocolate. And again, this sort of speaks to that mental aspect. When you're down in the dumps and you're bugging out and everything's going to crap, something like your favorite chocolate could be the one thing that pushes you to go just a little bit further. So personal item, Twix, why not? Also what I've got in here is Listerine. 
don't drink this guys this is just simply as a mouthwash again morale item so guys that was another vital thing to your bug out bag have a means to feed yourself if you are going to be bugging out because chances are you know as as normal human beings we are going to need food now there wasn't that much food in here but i live in a city so if necessary i will scavenge i won't i will try to do it illegally but if i have to i have to remember that which is necessary to survive is legal okay then coming around to the second compartment remember that good zips you want to be able to do that in this top section over here i'll try to get some good light on that for you i have a power bank and spare cell phone so guys remember we live in a technological environment and to not use that technology to your advantage is to forego a massive advantage so there might be a dire situation you need to bug out but you might still be able to get cell phone signals so having a spare cell phone in your bug out bag with the ability to charge it and data as well as uh, airtime on there very very useful so these charges, I think I've got like seven. I think I've got one for every backpack. Every time I get the backpack, I, I buy another charger. I like these ones. I like this brand because I know it. It gives me about three full charges in my cell phone. You use what you use, but I think it's very important to have some kind of communications because you might not be able to grab your phone as you're bugging out of your house or whatever the case may be. And then inside here, we've got the charger to my Olight S1R Baton 2. That is generally my EDC light. And I've also got that traffic cone thing in here. I did a full review on that. Um, simply having this in here simply because I may want to charge my EDC light if I can grab it. If not, then this doesn't really weigh anything. So it doesn't really make a difference. And then also what I've got in here is a spare set of batteries. Now, you remember I was telling you about that flashlights earlier on? So all the batteries in here are the CR123A batteries. That's because all the flashlights on my in my bug out bag except for the Imolent use CR123 batteries. And that is why I went with those specific kinds of light. I've also got a spare battery for my red dot site. Don't forget this, if you're running a red dot, those things are battery operated, so you are going to need a spare battery for that as well. And then I've also got one of these vehicle charger type deals. Um, if, you, if I'm in a vehicle, I'm gonna charge pretty much everything, including my power bank. So you're gonna want something like this. And so that is just a bit of planning ahead. Everything I have in my bug out bag uses CR123A battery. So having so that means I only have to carry one type of spare battery. And that's why I went with all those options. That is this section here sorted. And then we've got another section at the bottom here. And in here we have a space poncho. I hope the light isn't too bright here. We've got a space poncho. Again, free food. This is like 60 bucks and this can literally save your life. Space blanket, space poncho, pretty much same deal. Just this one covers your head, which is where you lose most of your heat in bad temperature conditions. And then just one of these pocket heating pads. Again, this thing costs 30 bucks, folds up super small. Just going to be super convenient. Morale booster, if you're getting really cold, put this in your pocket, put it against your chest, whatever the case may be, and it'll heat you up really, really well. We'll stay warm for 15 hours. This pocket, I've got some what I would consider just spare webbing if I need to lash two things together, if I need to tie anything down. On the firearm side of things, I have a minimalist holster with a extra mag carrier, both from Edge Custom Carrier. So I usually carry a, a extra mag and having an extra mag carrier is useful and this is so small again does you don't really need to not have something like this it's it's such a small thing if you do have it and you aren't using it chuck it in your bug out bag if you're not carrying your firearm with a a flashlight something like this is very useful because it's very very minimalistic very light very easy to lug around okay that's that pocket done then in this pocket over here we've got some binos and guys again i am sorry about the single view but it's the best way i can film this video some binoculars that is inside another pouch. Binoculars, this is a really old pair of binoculars that I just have sitting around in my cupboard. So why not chuck it in there at the end of the day? The one who can see the fight first is often the one who can win the fight. If you are bugging out, having a good view of the terrain ahead is vital. It'll help you plan your route. So no reason not to have this if you do have it, but not, not effectively essential. I just happen to have a spare set of binoculars. And it fits this pocket perfectly so why not and then also in this pocket is a spare gun belt so this is a belt from sniper gear and remember i may not be able to get my gun belt if i am running at three o'clock in the morning so i'm going to need something to attach my firearm to if i use this holster or any other holster having a spare gun belt in your bug out bag 
is going to aid with that. No point in having a gun if you can't keep it on your person, if it becomes very uncomfortable to keep on your person. And then coming around to the front pocket again, I want to stress that high quality zips that you can just yank like that. Here we've got some fire making tools. I'll see if I can get that in. So this is a blowtorch style lighter. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. This will light in pretty much any kind of environment, rain, sunshine, dust, dirt, whatever the case may be, this guy is going to work. So if you do need to make a fire urgently, you're going to want something like this. Unfortunately, it does go through its gas quite quickly. So being able to have some matches is also extremely valid. And then this, this is just a piece of cloth that you can use to light the fire effectively. You'd effectively want to light this, cut the piece off, light it, and you know, put it under your tinder bundle or everything that's going to be just to aid in lighting and getting that fire actually going. Again, if I'm using this, my plan has got gone pretty much um, south, but you know, you want that ability to be able to adapt. And that's another vital concept. You've got to be able to adapt in a bug out situation. In this back section here of the front pocket, I've got a wallet with some cash in it. That can be buy money, bribe money. I've also got a credit card in there just in case. Remember, we are bugging out, but you might be able to still have access to basic social services. So if you don't have to steal food, buy food. You know, Don't be a criminal. It's just good planning to have some spare cash because we live in a world where cash is king. And then you've also got this mesh pocket over here. Inside this mesh pocket, I have a map. So this is an A3 size map of where I'd be bugging out to. And I've also got a close-up of the location, so I'm not going to show you too much about that. But effectively, if I'm not driving, someone can just grab this and they can get me to where I need to be or what the bug out location is. Remember, you're probably going to be bugging out with more than one person, so they've got to be they've got to understand what that requirement is. A notepad, I'm not going to go into why you need a notepad. There are a million different reasons for needing a notepad. Also got a pen here. You can this is one um, that is on the religious side, I figure if I am bugging out, my spiritual readiness needs to be out dry. So it's got like little um, sort of prayers on each page. And again, it might be the, the morale boost you need to get you through the day, a reminder of, of, of what you're doing and who you're doing it for and, and who's got your back, if that is your belief system. Okay, guys, so that is pretty much my bug out bag as I have it packed. I do also just want to let you know that between the last scene and this scene, I ate that Twix um, because I gave into temptation. So... I have to get the new tweaks. One other thing, my EDC flashlight is the Olight PL2 Valkyrie. So here again, that, that similarity in the batteries, this also takes two CR123A batteries. So I've tried to, as I said, keep all my batteries the as similar or the same, so that I know I only need to carry one type for all my battery operated lights and things like that. And then guys, just remember my bug out bag is my own personal pack. Obviously, you everyone's going to have a different opinion on it, which is fine. I'm 100% for that. Some might say I have too much gear. Others might say I have too little. You're probably both right. And so the bug out bag is an evolution. I try to, to sort of build it um, as I go along. It's constantly changing, every improving as my ability, as my mindset, as my bug out plan changes. Remember, my bug out plan is to get to my vehicle and from my vehicle to a secondary location outside of the city. Also, I live in the city. So food and things like that, it's not going to be too difficult for me to attain. There's, there's, there's food everywhere in the city as long as you're willing to do what's necessary to get it. So guys, remember this is the Sniper Africa Expedition Pack. If you like the way I laid this out or if you like this pack, that is what you need to get for yourself. Really comfortable, really good bag. More backpack reviews to come soon. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good week. Cheers. God bless.